city build that had to run the air conditioning and so on. And so now the Dundas was faced with a different challenge. How do we fund this? But in 1977, with a view to recognizing the function of the Dundas as being an artistic center, it was renamed the Dundas Center for the Performing Arts. A logo was designed, and a year-long season of events took place to help fund the developments. And these, the first half is there, January, the Nassau Players produced Cinderella. Part proceeds went to the Dundas. Um, the Dundas Fair was held on February 19, 1977. In, in February, Bahama Drama Circle, Ceremonies in Dark Old Men. In April, schools did a salute, and all, I guess all of, the, all of the tickets, part proceeds of all of these would have gone towards funding this. The National Arts Festival was held in May. The Nassau Players did the hollow in June. God and the Naked Nigger by P. Anthony White the unit was produced by the University Players in July. In August, they had the Mike Malone Workshop, this was, I think Philip can tell you a little bit more about Mike Malone. He was an American um, who came to do workshops for interested people. In August, in November, the Nassau Amateur Operatic Society did Finian's Rainbow. And in December, Shirley Hall Bass, the Bahamas Dance Theater, produced Alibaba. Another similar season was planned for 1978. But it seemed as though only half, the first half of the year, came to fruition. Um, you can see it there, and you'll see, I think a little bit earlier, 1975, I missed out, I neglected to add in when the Beaux-Arts Ball was created, I think it was 75, to also help with raising funds. And at that same time, James Catlin and friends, who could not be a member of the Dundas because they were a, a limited company, as opposed to a not-for-profit not company, made their contribution by helping to organize the Beaux-Arts Ball. Um, and they also began to hold Summer Madness. And so that gives you an idea, 1975 to now, Summer Madness has been running. Um, but in 1979 now, Winston Saunders' focus was, was dual because that was the 250th anniversary of Parliament in the Bahamas and a pageant was being produced and so on. And at that time, the season's productions flagged. It kind of went back to the original the member groups would produce one or two productions, but this whole year of activities <laughs> did not happen in 1979. Although attempts were made, including a production of Julius Caesar for school groups, um, a visiting performance of King Midas and the Golden Touch from the Merry-Go-Round Playhouse of Carl Gables, Florida, the Dundas heads into the 1980s with a high overhead, debts from the renovations, and serious challenges regarding the generation of funds. The season has been an idea that has been tried, hasn't yet worked. So Winston Saunders decides what we need to do is create a repertory season in which we have something that is recurring. We create a rep and we, rather than relying on the groups to come up with the productions, the Dundas itself will produce things for the season. And at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Philip because he was there at the founding of the repertory season. Not a lecturer, so I'm going to read. <laughs> and uh, some of this is about me, so I'm going to read it the way it's written. Just let you know that. Okay, done this repertory season 1981 to 1999. In 1978, Philip Rowers graduated, a graduate <laughs> of Andrew Curry's Aquinas College and former member of the Nassau Amateur Operatic Society left the Bahamas to study acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. He returned to the Bahamas in May 1980 to take up a position at the Institute of the Arts run by Kayla Lockett Edwards. That position never materialized. <laughs> uh, Philip attends a rehearsal at the Drama Circle production of The Gin Game. Gail Saunders comes up and says, who are you? What are you doing here? So I let her know who I was, and I go in, and um, Winston Saunders is directing this production, and he invites me to take notes of his two actors, who are Patrick Ramming and Patricia Caldwell. After I give the notes, um, I'm invited to attend the remaining rehearsals and to assist in makeup for the actors who had to both be aged for this production of The Gin Game. At the cast party, Winston and I had a discussion about the fact that the workshop, the teaching thing, had fallen through. 
So he said, well, let me see what I could do. And he goes and he speaks to Mrs. Xenius and Mrs. Marie, Mrs. Xenius at St. Anne's and Mrs. Marie at Government High. And he says, can we get students from your schools to come and uh, be involved in the workshop? And he also talks to, I think it was the secretary of the University Players at the time, Claudette Allens, <laughs> and says, can the university, would the University Players be interested in uh, a workshop being done? So I start to do those two workshops. Uh, about three days before the completion of the second workshop, I'm invited to return to New York to perform in a play. Limited run production, so I leave. I finish the workshop, but I leave. <laughs> Um, uh, when the run has been completed, um, Winston actually uh, had clients in New York and he came up and I saw the production. Um, I'm given a place through Winston's intervention. He was in uh, St. Thomas and he met up with the director of the uh, Eugene O'Neill Theater Center. And they asked him if there was any Bahamians that would be interested in coming to the center. And he called me and said, the classes started yesterday. Can you get to Connecticut and do this thing? So I did. At the end of this, I returned to Nassau. Now in 1981, Winston invites all of the members of the Dundas, all of the members of the member groups, to come to the Dundas to have a meeting to talk about the future of the Dundas. On the table was the repertory season. Now the rationale was that the experience of the last two years demonstrated that despite the best of the group's intentions, the activity in the Dundas was too little uh, to make ends meet. In Winston's words, the theater is closed more than it's open. Most groups perform between three and eight nights a year. So the solution, a repertory season which would run for five months to generate activity and revenue for the theater. Um, now, the way that the repertory would differ from the seasons of 77 to 79 would be that the season would be united under a single artistic vision. The season would draw upon the strengths of all the member groups. The season would generate a repertory company that would be able to perform plays back to back. Needless to say, the groups were a bit skeptical about this, but they, um, it was a very kind of raucous meeting. <laughs> and the, the two people who I specifically remember helping to push this through were two members of the Nassau Players, Tony Betts and Tony Osborne. And they broke ranks with everybody else and said, look, we need to give this a try. Because they all did productions with the Nassau Players and sometimes joint productions with the Nassau Amateur Operating Society. So through the help of those two gentlemen, in the discussions, people relented and said, okay, we will give this a try. So the first experiment was to be two plays, 12 Angry Men and Anne Misridden Drinks a Little, to be directed by American television star John Amos, Roots, Good Times. And he was also supposed to have a part in those productions. So the idea here was to run a play, close it, and three days later, open the next play. Two five-night runs, Tuesday through Saturday, were planned. Uh, now, this would be the 1981 Dundas Repertory season, the actual first season. Well, after the rehearsals began for the plays, John Amos discovered that he had taken on a little bit more than he can deliver. So, you know, to direct in and star in two plays um, that were three days apart, it, it was just uh, too much. So I was approached by Winston and asked to take over um, and Miss Raiden drinks a little, leaving John to direct 12 Angry Man and be in both plays. Um, he had asked me this because I had just returned with him and a whole group of crazy people. Uh,